Like well, a... happy quarantine, everyone. Happy Hi. quarantine. Yeah, we're one week in to uh, the quarantine, and everyone's gone insane. Yeah, no, it's not really. See, it really isn't all that different for us because I work from home four days a week, and now I work from home five days a week. And the kids all did online school from home last year, and now they're all doing online school from home like they did. So we, we did church on TV, on Facebook Live, so that's been the biggest change. So on the docket for this spring, we have our third batch of eggs in the incubator. These are more Bielfelders. Mm -hmm. And so the other Bielfelders in the, what, Bantams? The Clays. The, I'm sorry. The Duckles. The Duckles. The Millefleur de Clay Duckles, Except I call we, them. We got three black chicks. Millefleur chicks are black. Oh. And um, now they're getting, like, white leakage. Ooh, that doesn't sound, that sounds gross. This year, uh, I have done Seed Starts Down in the Basement before in the laundry room, and it's like... 59 degrees in there. So this year I thought, well, if we can grow chickens in the living room, why can't we grow, you know, uh, live plants in the living room too? So this year we're trying the blocks. And so they'll be 70 degrees this year instead of 59, which is exciting. And I went through all my seeds before we were in quarantine and threw a whole bunch away from many, many years, and maybe that was a bad idea. But we have plenty of other seeds that arrived beforehand. I think we are pretty, I think we're pretty, uh, yeah, I'm keeping the camera on you because this is super embarrassing. I'm your dad, this is what dads do. This is so embarrassing. Oh, some just came out of your face. Hey, someday we'll just show this to a boyfriend. Oh, you dropped some. Come on, take another bite. <laughs> Come on, show all the people on YouTube. There's 1,800 people going to watch this. And if our, if our channel grows really big to like millions of people, they'll all go back and see the videos from the early years of you just stuffing your face and dropping it all over. This is so embarrassing. Anywho, that was, that was fun. <laughs> anyway, it's a really nice, beautiful, sunny day outside. We're going to go in the shop today, and we're going to build a... Uh, what are we building? Uh, Ohio Brooder. Our second Ohio Brooder. Farm, we still have big plans this year. There's nothing really going to change in terms of what we're growing because of coronavirus, because people still need to eat. I said I wasn't going to talk about it anymore. We're not, not going to talk about it anymore. I'm over it. Over it. Over it. I was sick and tired of it, like, the first day. We're talking about it again. Stop. We're not talking about it. <laughs> so, we have more birds that we're growing broilers that we're growing this year because oh, Maddie's eating messy again. More birds for uh, the farm this year because we're not doing the grant anymore and that kind of limited how many birds that we could do because we were keeping track of all the data. So we are gonna actually grow Some birds for 200, Friday. we're gonna grow 400 birds on the farm this year. 400? Yeah, 200 for our farm and 200 for another farm. And most of them are going to be in the brooder at the same time. So we have to build two brooders. And so we already have the one uh, brooder from last year that we built. That was an Ohio brooder. And we're going to build another Ohio brooder. I should be talking while we watch you eat. That's that's a little bit more embarrassing for you. But right, all the people. You just hear ominous crunching yes, sounds. Yes, lots of crunching noise. So I'm eating potato chips, okay? No judging. Very loud. So we're going to build that today. And as soon as she's done eating, we can get started. I'm trying to hurry, but you know, like all this pressure is making me. If I had a watch on my arm, I'd be looking at it right now, waiting. I have a watch on my arm. Okay. You don't. How long are we gonna wait here? Well, maybe if you turn the camera off, I'll actually be able to stop eating and stop laughing and start eating. That's not gonna happen. This is so painful. Oh, I just gotta get some things here. Are you still eating? Mm -hmm. Teenagers, always hungry. Hey ladies. Hey girls. These are the most productive egg laying chickens I've ever seen in my life. They're amazing. They laid all winter long. Oh yeah. Oh man. I'm so lazy in winter. I never put anything away. It's like car work from two weeks ago. 
That was from defrosting the water. I fixed the waterer this year, so we don't have to haul buckets of water. Go, Dad. There's a whole bunch of, oh, we're not gonna be able to use a table saw unless we move all that stuff. Oh man, this project just went from like two hours to four. You ready to clean? Say hi, cat. Who's talking to me? Who's talking to me? Oh, there, oh, there you are. <laughs> hey, it's been a while since you've been on YouTube. Oh, I think they're saying hi to the people. You're so nice. You're so nice. You're so nice. You smell like a skunk. Ugh, gross. Look, Maddie, the trash. It's almost full. <laughs> When I was a kid, the trash was full when it reached here. Not here, not here, but here. Should I put an apple on it and make it all the way full? Oh yeah, put it on there. Be careful now. Easy, easy. Whoa, okay, now it's full. Definitely. We're gonna make a four by four brooder, four feet by four feet. And that should hold up to like 200 chicks in the brooder. And that, a two by four should hold 100 chicks. Last year, the one I made was just out of scrap wood that I had around, so it was like 30 inches by 50 inches. Uh, but a two by four should do 100 chicks. So all we have is a couple of lamps. These are clear 125 watt. Uh, they aren't the special ones that you get from the store that are red. Mm -hmm. that are meant for brooders because you don't need those 250 watt ones. Mm -hmm. This thing is a box, an upside down box on stilts, so it holds heat. Um, and then you need a couple of porcelain lamp holders, no chains or anything on them, just the lamps. And then a couple of boxes, these boxes go on the back of the lamp, you feed the wire through there. I don't remember what the two by four by eight is, but we'll find out. The two by two by eight is for the legs, and then these one by twos by eight, those are for the cleats that will bring the two pieces of plywood together. Uh, and then the last piece is this uh, four by eight sheet of half inch OSB or half inch plywood. The OSB is 10 bucks, plywood's 22.57. At Home Depot, we went with the OSB just to see. And so the brooder is gonna be four by four as its footprint, so half of this will go to the top and then we'll do four one by four sheets that will be the four sides put some cleats in it to make an upside down topless box and then put the two by twos in there screw it together and then you're done making the box after that uh, on the sides you cut two holes for these and put the or you don't even have to cut holes for them you just screw them in and just drill a hole for the wire coming in and then after that it's just however much you want to hide the wires I like to hide the wires a lot, so we'll probably do more on that with just stuff we have laying around. Yeah. Okay. That's it. And now, through the magic of YouTube, the next two hours of work will happen in the next 30 seconds. <laughs> you guys just going to sit here and watch us work? <laughs> Straight. The answer... You broke it. Perfect. I did that on purpose to teach you lots of lessons. <laughs> lots of lessons. Lots of lessons. I meant, I meant to do that. See? This is how not to do it. How not to saw things. We'll edit all of this out. You cleaning? Yeah. Good job. Someone's responsible the around here. Is watching, this is how they're earning their Roth IRA. Okay. Money. Earned income. Guess what? I don't have any money, so that's why I'm doing this. Hi. Hi, Jack. All right, so what we're doing next is we got our four cleats, and we have them cut, and now we're drilling a hole in the end, and we're just going to put a hole. I'm sorry, we're drilling a screw in the end. We're going to do that on all four corners, and then we'll have, uh, uh, we'll drill a couple of holes, pilot holes through the bottom maybe two or three around each side and then we'll drill them in um, and we'll drill we'll drill them close to the edges and then we'll wood glue underneath 
because wood glue just makes everything a little bit stronger and sturdier. And then we'll put a whole bunch of screws around all four corners. Oh, I love feedback grinders. That a girl. Okay. So we have all four sides on, as you can see. So this is actually going to be the top. You can see there's that lip with the cleat. And that's so you can put uh, wood shavings or whatever on top, and that acts as an insulator. Now you can see we have nice edges right here. You know, that's this is where the... That's where the foot is going to go in, and that one looks real nice because that's where we started. And then, as you can see, you get further along, and uh-oh, not so nice. Uh, that one's better, but this one is not so nice. So that's pretty much going to get taken care of by just squeezing together and then putting the 2x2 two two in there. So next we're going to... Uh, oh, and we just, all we did was put one longer screw in here and, you know, cheap dry wood gets whatever, but this thing doesn't move very much. And then we just put six screws in along this edge into the back of the cleat and they don't stick out much unless we put them in there too far. It's actually seven screws. Seven screws, six or seven along the edge. Five, six, seven. And then eight on the end. And then we're good to make the feet. And then we put in the lights. And then we put in the lights. And we're done. Yay! Yay! All right, so we're going to cut, grab the 2x2, two two, Manny. Two oh, that's okay. So the 2x2, two two, oh, good luck if you ever two find two. a straight one. A straight one, but you were cutting them into, you know, smaller pieces. Straight, straight, straight. Sort of straight. <laughs> I didn't we'll start on this. Side. It's it's never not. I mean, two by two is never straight. Daddy, I didn't know we were making the Ohio border. That's right. Oh. That's right. Okay, so uh, <laughs> what you want to do is you want to make these feet stick down. Jack, grab my grab the tape measure there, please. You want these feet to stick down six inches below. So what we should have is from the bottom of that board right there. So measure from the bottom of that board in there. Stick it up right in there. And we're at, what, 10 inches? Yeah. So we need 14 inches. Wait. Or 16 inches. I was like, that's math. Yes, not add. math. Okay. So we need 16 inch pieces. And then we will just drill them in on both sides to make flush, nice corners. And then it'll stand on its own four feet. You shall not pass. Mm, very Gandalfy. Very Gandalfy. <laughs> okay, so we have the first of the electrical boxes in. What we did is we measured the width from side to side, put it in the center, and then we measured the height side to side and put it in the center. We had to knock out the middle there so we could mark the center. And where's the other box? Uh, oh, it's over there on the workbench. My lovely assistant. There you go. The other cool thing about this thing is once you build it, it becomes a new toolbox. So what we did is we knocked out this middle one here, and then we can put a mark there, and we know how to center it. And then you can see there's two screws that are through the side that holds the box in, one on either side of the plus sign knockout there. And then we took a little piece of this extra one by three, and now this is all attached in here real nice. And then at the bottom, we did a knockout here, and that knockout is going to be where the wire comes in. So the wire will come in from the top, we'll screw in We'll screw a hole in right there, and it'll come right down into here, and that's where we'll wire it up. So we'll just mark it right now, right in the middle, spot right there. So the wire will come up, come in through there. We'll get a spade bit or whatever, and, and uh, do a, just a half inch hole or something, and then we'll curve it up in through here and by putting it what will be the top make sure that dust doesn't get in there so chickens don't eat it yeah I'll put a little dab of cock or something well they're gonna be down here yeah. this is gonna be the ceiling uh, 
and then the wire will come up through there. That keeps the wire away from the birds, then they won't peck at it and stuff, and we don't want that. So we're going to do that on the other side now. So Willa chews through hoses. And then Willa chooses, no, yeah, Willa chews the ends off of hoses, and Nego chews brand spanking new extension cords. That are plugged he in. Yeah. Heavy duty 12 gauge extension cords. So if you're doing this, you're going to be putting, it, you know, possibly if you have 250, two 250 watt bulbs, 500 watts through there. Uh, and so you're going to want to use a heavy duty extension cord. We're going to repurpose this one. Luckily, he chewed through it about two thirds of the way through. So we'll be able to use most of it. So we're going to cut it right at that spot. And oh yes, if you don't know he, I'm talking about Inigo, the wonder dog, uh, the big oaf the uh, polar bear who chewed through this while it was plugged in. The only thing I can think of is that while he was chewing on it, it wasn't heating the water bowl that it was plugged into. So, uh, so um, yeah, thanks for the $40 loss there. I guess repurposing it makes it not seem too bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut that off and we're going to wire it into the uh, sides here and we'll fish it up through there on one side and then we'll bring it over here to this side and then bring it out uh, of there so that it can be just plugged right in. That's one thing I like about using extension cords that ours already has the plug in on one side. Well, someone got cold and then someone who went to the house to warm up came back. My hands are not crazy red like they usually are when it's cold. I think it's actually kind of nice in here. So I don't know why Maddie's so cold. Anyway, let's look at the finished product on one side here. You can see there's the lamp. There's me in the shadows, or in the reflection. Hi. And so, basic, pretty simple here. It comes out, and uh, what we'll do is we'll put one of those catches on, you know what I'm talking about, for just regular Romex wire, and we'll loop it around the top, and then we'll go around to the other side. And with the other side, we'll go... We have two holes on this side. We'll go in from the other side in this one, and then we'll we'll wire it in, and then we'll come out here, and then this one will be where we plug it plug it in. Uh, but I guess we should figure out and see if this one works. Here, Jack, hold on to this. Point it at the at the light there. We'll see if we wired it up right. Nice. Looks like it works to me. Uh huh. It's getting hot. Oh yeah. Nice and hot already. Well, while the sister is in the house warming up, we're gonna go play baseball. Yes. I'm gonna play some catch. Yes. So close to the camera. Okay, so we're looking at the other side here, and this is the side where you have the extension cord coming in, as well as the uh, piece from the other side. So here we have wire nut with the incoming, the outcoming, and then a pigtail that goes to one side. Same thing for the hot wire. And I did this because the extension cord is stranded wire, and the stranded wire on these terminals just doesn't really... I didn't like it. So instead, I just put around these on the uh, porcelain lamp holder, and then we'll just shove all the wires in there, turn this on, and then we'll have our second side and we will be uh, ready to go. This gardener bender, stuff. Uh, what plastic are they called? Staples. Plastic staples. Put those in and that keeps stuff from falling around and, and uh, getting kicked off and moving out of the way. I have sawdust in my eye, it really is. Even though I wore safety goggles. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's complete. When you uh, take a look at this jack on top here, this is the cord. We just put these little dealies in so that it can't move and it can't be yanked out. And so on this side, we got one coming out over there. It just comes over this side, goes into this one, and then wired into the light on this side, and then comes right back out. I was thinking that we might do something with this, but then... I, this is, this is pretty well like looped around inside, so it's not going anywhere. I'm not too worried about it. But compared to the one that we built for last year, this one is roughly twice as wide. And it's a little bit wobblier, but uh, you're going to need two people to carry it anyway. So it's 
It's not too bad when you have two people carrying it. And then again, six inches off the floor. And then this is what it looks like when you turn it on. This is that you take some wood shavings and you just put them on here. You have, uh, you know, whatever it is, an inch and a half. You put those wood shavings on and they'll act as an insulator on the top. And I'm sure that this thing, once, maybe when the birds are really old, like on that like third day or third week, mm -hmm. it probably could jump up on there too. Maybe. So the things I'm not so sure about is the lamps. Um, maybe we're gonna need to go to 250 watt lamps, but these are 125s for quiet. The birds are all huddled right underneath the lamps, then it's no bueno. If they are happy and running in and out to regulate their own temperature, and that works and, and that's the reason why you do the Ohio brooder is because with the regular brooder you have lamps that are giving out a certain amount of heat all the time and you have to somehow figure out how to regulate that by turning them on or turning them off or venting the lid on a regular <coughs> brooder this is really nice because um, when the bird gets too hot he just leaves and when he gets too cold he just comes back in so it kind of is like a four by four foot mother hen I like this because you can insulate the top of it and the other one that we built last year, if you look at it, the videos from last year, is we actually put foam insulation here and then put more wood over the top of it. So it has foam insulation uh, on top of it. And so it's insulated and you don't have to put anything um, on top of it. When we bought the 2x4 and bought these pieces, it came out to about 40 bucks for the lamps and everything. Um, Getting rid of this lumber that we didn't use is probably 35 bucks or $32. But then we repurposed this extension cord, which is probably the most expensive part of the whole thing. So we're into this project for less than $35, I'm sure. And it took us about two and a half hours to make it. When I was teaching kids how to do things, I had a break in there to go warm hands up, play some baseball, warm feet up. But I think uh, if you knew what you're doing and you had the plans, which they're online, I'll link them in the description, and you you know, were good with this kind of stuff, you'd probably do it an hour, and, between an hour and two hours. So. A pretty good investment for a brooder, I think. Pretty cheap. It looks good. It looks wonderful. Thanks for your help. I'm trying to play some baseball, but these sheep won't leave us alone. Oh, lambing jumping. Jumping, jumping. Self imposed stampede. This one's too pregnant to even run. Oh, so jumping. Great with lamb. All right, now we can play some baseball, right? All right, there we go. Uh oh, now I can't throw it back to you. Oh, lame. So bad. All right, we'll cu cut the video out and play some real baseball. Here we go. Ooh, 34 degrees, beautiful sunset. The lambs are, or the sheep are fine. Mother Willa is enjoying mommy. Karen is uh, babysitting the newborns. She's getting out to, oh, oh, more sheep jumping. They're frisky folks, they're frisky. Be free Willa, be free. Come here, come on. Yeah, oh yeah, oh. Yeah, you're such a good girl. You love me best. I know you do. I know you love me best. Go! Go see! Go see Jack! That's a good girl. Alright. Just a little... Can't quarantine for too long. Oh! We got sheep button heads too. They're showing us all the stuff. Even the land... Or even the... Even the ewes do it. Not just a ram thing. You guys stop eating the grass. I got nice expensive hay for you. More more jumping. More jumping. More jumping. Oh, more head budding. They are frisky tonight. Oh, back to eating. Back to eating. Maybe there'll be more jumping and head budding soon. Alright, let's play baseball now. Yeah. Okay. Now. Bye, sunset.